Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. So let's talk about some stuff that's not super exciting to talk about. But I did something dumb. And that's when you do something dumb, your bees leave or they die or something like that. So unfortunately, I killed a hive on accident. Um, either when I was doing the oxalic acid vapor treatment, I left the, uh, the, the stick in there um, too closed up to where they weren't able to ventilate. And I think because we mowed and blew some grass up against it between the combination, they weren't able to get enough air circulation. They overheated, and bees in summer will overheat very quickly. They've got to be able to get out and fan and get their bodies away. Even if they can't, um, if, even if they're not going to overheat the entire colony, they can still cook brood being too hot. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. So, check this split out. Brand new queen. It's a well made split. And uh, thankfully, we're not going to lose any of the combs because we're getting to it in time. The small hive beetles. Um, we're just doing a little bit of damage down in here, eating the brood and some of the, the pollen uh, that's put in the bee bread. But we're going to freeze these frames and we'll stick them in a strong colony. It'll be fine. They haven't hardly damaged them at all. Bees will fix it. All right, look at all these dead bees down in here. See them up here too? They've, they've been trying to get away from it. I've let the, some of the colonies forage this food out. Um, but yeah, just look at all those dead bees. Just because they couldn't ventilate into the colony. Now they had a feeder rim. They had two lids on top of them. So they had, you know, just like this lid here, but they had another one up on top. They had the feeder rim, so they had a lot of head space. They only covered about four and a half, five frames. So they had a lot of room, but it still was too hot. Bees have to get that air circulation through there. And even with the white jester nuke boxes that I really like to use occasionally, and that's how we sell our nucleus colonies and whatnot, if you get them really packed, and if you were to even just, like I've done this before, where you'll close them up of a night, it's like 72, 75 degrees. Humidity's high though, especially here. And then uh, they're, if they're real packed, you can move them early in the next morning to a completely different yard, have them opened up by 7 a.m., but it's too late. You've already cooked some brood if they're really packed because bees' bodies are so hot, and they've got to be able to get themselves away. And that's why you see a lot of bearding in summer because bees just have to get away from that brood or they'll cook it. It comes in handy in wintertime, though, when they're brooding up here in January. Let me just look at all those bees. Doggone. There's more... Oh my goodness, look at that. So they were just up against that wall trying to get away as best they could from the heat. Man, what a waste. Yeah, that's a, that's a, I don't know, probably a good nukes worth of bees there. So, you know, we are not perfect. That's why we show you these videos. It would be extremely easy to be able to only show you the videos of where, where things are working out, our queen cells are doing good, we're not getting stung because we have gentle super stock and all this kind of stuff like that. But we, we are trying to create a channel as best as possible where we keep it real. And this stuff happens, and this was my fault. Um, I should have known better or should, should have gone back afterwards and double checked everything. A lot of times I do. Check out this colony right here next to it. This is what it should look like right now. This colony is just fine. They might need a little bit of feed. Get out of the way. There we go. So that colony, it had its entrance open enough where they could just blow that air through there. And one thing I hope our videos do more than anything is show you the how realistic a beekeeping life is. I mean, you cannot plan on having five colonies and for them staying alive forever. There's a couple, I'm not going to say what I'm thinking, people that say, oh, I've had bees for this many years and I've never lost a hive and they produce this much honey. And I'm like, do you realize how insane you sound? Obviously, you don't keep bees because nobody, now I'm not saying you can't have 100% going through the winter one year, you, that can't happen. But for that just to happen forever, what kind of fantasy is that? I don't live in that world, at least not here in Tennessee. Maybe that's on the tropical island of Hawaii. All right, rant done, but seriously. If, I've raised thousands of baby chicks. I've raised a lot of different animals over the years. And whether it's bees, chicks,
cows, anything. You're going to have losses. Hopefully our videos will show you how to be able to make your own queens, or if you buy queens, how to make good splits and increase your apiary. If you're wanting three hives, maybe you should plan on having two nukes in addition to your three colonies in case you lose one. They swarm out. Maybe you do something boneheaded like that. Uh, whatever it is, have a backup plan. We have to have backup colonies. If we want to have 300 production colonies or 400 production colonies next year, we got to have at least, in my opinion, an extra 15 to 20 percent. Because not that we're going to lose that many, but some of them just don't come out of winter ready to make a lot of honey. So you've got to plan for that. If you have any comments or questions on the stupid things we do around here, leave them below.